Thank you, Maria Rosa, and thank you for the invitation. Obviously, there is a lot to unpack here, but I'll stay focused uh, on the specifics of this session lined up before, uh, so I try to stay within the five minutes. Uh, first, contributing with some ideas on how to facilitate B2B and B2G data, data sharing. We know a lot of companies don't engage in B2B data sharing. Um, and why is that? Well, that's, you know, privacy concerns, uh, IP issues, trade secrets, the fear of misappropriation of the data, uh, considerations of commercial strategy, um, the lack of demand uh, for a company's data, and of course, the uncertainty about safety, security, the liability conditions um, related to the technical process of sharing data. So just to say that I think we all agree here, uh, including with MEP Kumpula, that there are some issues uh, that are there and, that, and you know, could become obstacles even more to data sharing. And if you look at the data strategy, the way it stands, some things indeed require clarification as they uh, remain undecided, as Richard said, uh, and some things should be kept in mind. So yes, there are risks uh, related to legal uncertainty and compliance costs. So what happens when your data sets like in the healthcare or financial services um, data space would be mixed with personal and non-personal data and that can be costly to separate them. So we need clear guidance and governance about compliance. And you know, you have some sort of um, regulatory double think here. The GDPR limits to some extent the collection of data, of personal data and processing, but this idea of data sharing encourages it with the data strategy, yet there will be arbitrages case, case by case that will be necessary and that will add complexity to companies. And data portability can also be costly and um, that should be factored in a bit better, which wasn't the case in the GDPR. Uh, if we want uh, companies to take more than uh, a superficial interest in supporting the data spaces, there will have to be a clearer business rationale and incentives uh, for contributing data that was closed until now, and it shouldn't become pay to play or too costly or time consuming. And those that are running data institutions and indeed um, who will be these intermediaries uh, would have to ensure transparency uh, about the costs, communicate clearly uh, for, um, you know, about the value offered to stakeholders and demonstrate uh, the impact through evaluations. Um, Malta and others refer, refer to trust. It's important to consider the different methods that exist for data sharing and enhancing trust. So you have third party assessments, certifications and audits, and some are better suited for certain sectors and circumstances. So what works to create trust for data sharing and finance might not work in healthcare or between two organizations sharing data directly versus those doing that uh, within an ecosystem uh, via an intermediary. Next, um, we should experiment with smart data initiatives, data trust and other voluntary data sharing models. I'd refer here to the UK national strategy on data recently released because these models really can help to improve uh, data quality uh, and also the, um, can encourage businesses to share and collect data more responsibly. Uh, one more point. Um, it, it, is that it's not always useful to share data as such. The expertise also matters. And there's not just one type of data. There are many millions of different data sets covering different and unrelated types of things with different applications. So the pooling and overlap and cross application of those data sets does not always uh, make sense. Uh, Adam referred to the individuals that would be in charge of decision making. Uh, they would need certainly first to have more literacy and better knowledge um, of things and tools if we expect them to make those decisions, I believe. Um, another point is the quantity of data matters, yes, but even more is the quality because that could address concerns related to data driven systems like AI systems we see with bias. Uh, Obviously, uh, interoperability remains an issue. Uh, it will be important to, to start by streamlining the adoption of common standards by all member states. We know how uh, EU information systems uh, lack the common standards and are fragmented. We've seen that with uh, medical data. We see that with high resolution geospatial data. One idea perhaps to consider is to use cooperative digital trade agreements and memorandum of understanding to ensure better data governance and interoperability. So you'd have partners identify opportunities to build data sharing frameworks between stakeholders um, in different countries on mutually beneficial issues. And that pre-standardization cooperation uh, would prevent things to be baked into all sides and politicized uh, you know, before it, you know, it can actually become a framework. Um, and one last point, sorry, uh, 
on, on, on mandating uh, data sharing, it's, it will be important to clarify and ensure data sharing isn't mandatory. Uh, sometimes some government initiatives may be helpful for that uh, by identifying industries where there are barriers to data sharing, for instance, but there are many examples of the private sector sharing uh, data already. You see that with pharmaceutical companies, there's a lot of existing coordination with industry, with codes of conduct and self-regulation frameworks, and some consolidation of that would be great to start with. Um, just as important is to emphasize more strongly IP as well in the proposals. So we know the idea is not to force uh, companies to, to give up proprietary data and trade secrets. Real quick, one last point I wanted to address on the um, anti-competitive behavior and how to address that. In some industries and markets, you have a small number of firms that have exclusive access to particular data sets. And so these companies uh, exploit their market power to limit access to that data through both technical and uh, administrative means without any legitimate business justification. You see that in real estate or in the air uh, travel industry. So a good framework to consider could be to evaluate, um, so to know whether to intervene. Uh, first, does the company have uh, exclusive access to data? Is the company limiting access to, to this data in ways that uh, harm consumers? Um, third, does the company operate in the absence of any legitimate business justification? Then you could use that framework through industry-led initiatives whereby um, stakeholders represented different business models. So banks and third-party personal finance apps, for instance, would oversee the decision-making process. And I'll stop here. I'm sorry I was super quick, but um, I hope uh, this was useful and I'm looking forward to the discussion.